Hey guys, welcome back to another review today. I'm going to be looking at a brand new product from XTAR. This is the XTAR VC8S battery charger, the new and improved version of the old XTAR VC8. I've been using this one for quite some time now, probably about a year plus, and it was originally gifted to me by my friend Tim McMahon. You can check his channel out in the description. I was really excited, like I said, to see that XTAR had released this new upgraded version, the VC8S. There's a whole bunch of different features and improvements I really want to go through with you guys, and XTAR has provided me this sample free of charge for me to review. And basically, the XTAR VC8S here charges pretty much every battery that I can throw at it. I mean, I've got all types of batteries here. This is just a small collection of them. But if you want to see a big list of the batteries that this charger does support, you can have a look in the video description. I'll add a link there. So I wanted to do a little side-by-side -side comparison between the VC8S with the VC8. And you can see already... The big difference is the size. I mean, the VC8 was smaller, VC8S is a little bit taller and just uh, larger in general. There are some little differences as you can see here like this. They've added some extra grates here. I think they probably just help with the cooling and uh, yeah, sides of it pretty much the same. If you look at the feet of both of them, this the new model just has some extra padding at the bottom, larger grip pads. But yeah, physical differences, really, they're not all too different other than, yeah, the VC8S is larger. And the cool thing with that as well is that it is also able to charge a 26800 cell. And this isn't officially supported in the manual. It's not listed in the cell, but I found that it does, it is able to fully charge a cell, no issue. You know, I can't fit it. If you try to put it in the old VC8, check this out. It doesn't, it really doesn't fit the new one chuck it in there very easily detects the cell um charges it up i've got to put this on a bit of an angle so you can see the screen okay i've already had charged this one up a bit before anyhow another upgrade from the original vc8 is that the vc8s can charge two cells at three amps four cells at two amps or eight cells at one amp okay that was something that was a bit annoying with me with the original VC8. Just when you have more than a few cells in there, they just charge so slow. I almost feel like I want to take them out, just charge them separately, you know, in the flashlight itself. So it's good to see they've upgraded that. But one thing you need to remember is that you have to use a 45 watt power supply. You might have one of those at home. Otherwise, you can buy a version of this charger that includes the 45 watt power adapter. The VCAS will just adapt depending on whatever power supply you have in there. So if it's only capable of charging at one amp, you know, a few cells, that's what it's going to do. One thing I found a bit annoying on my VC8 was that it would detect some of the cells at 4.16 or 4.17 volts and stop charging when it should stop charging at 4.2 volts. Another upgrade is that the VC8S also allows you to use storage and capacity test mode on all eight slots instead of four, which was the case in the original VC8. And I'll show you all of the modes and features later on down the track. This is the box that it comes in. Okay, you can pause the video and have a little bit of a, a read if you want. Okay, and on the back here as well, if, you, if you'd like, you can also pause the video and just read through the supported batteries here on the back. Okay, a little, some basic instructions and features. XTAR will also include this manual. Really recommend that you read through this to understand all the features properly. So here's a little close-up of the VC. 8s and you can see with each of these bays the they're basically spring loaded um, you can see these prongs you pull it down and it's really good because you've got some decent decent sort of uh, pressure there as well so it's going to hold that battery in firmly these prongs are, and the the connection terminals are also a little bit taller and larger than in the original vc8 and you've got these two LCD panels, okay? Each of these LCD panels basically relate to the charging bays. So you've got charging bay one to four, which are gonna be listed on these first four bits here, and uh, five to eight here on the next four uh, 
slots here. Okay, you've also got these separate buttons that also relate to the first four and the last four batteries. So it's almost like they're two, four uh, cell battery chargers that are connected to together. So they operate independently. Alrighty, so I've propped the charger up a little bit so you can see the screen, just so that the uh, camera is able to, re to record the LCD display here. So let's go through all the different features. Now, the first feature I want to go through is the standard charging mode. And uh, basically, all you do is pick a bunch of cells, whichever ones you want to put in there. So say I've just got a, just got a few here. And some of them, the smaller batteries especially, you don't, might have to wiggle them around a bit so that they make connection. Okay, that 18350, I've had to wiggle that around a, a touch. This one's fine. Okay, depending on, on the, the type of cell that you're using. And you can see it already starts to read the voltage. It takes a little while. See that one there is still waiting. Okay, that's because it's it's calculating the internal resistance of the cell before it actually starts charging. Now these are all almost fully charged anyway. Okay, but you can see how fast they're being charged. This one's being charged at 1000 uh, milliamp hours. And it's, uh, this one's 452 or whatever, 249. Okay, it automatically adjusts, but you can actually go through and click that current button here and uh, select a uh, select another, yeah, basically a, another charging rate. Okay, so now they're both charging at one amp. Okay, there's a certain point as well when the battery is almost charged, the charger is going to reduce the the charging current. So it just does that. It goes down to about 250 milliamps. So yeah, usually when a battery is yeah just like discharged, maybe 3.8 to 3.9 volts, you're gonna get three uh, three amp charging, but just as it's almost charged, it does reduce the, the current a little bit. And also the more batteries in here as well, the lower the, the total uh, charging current as well per cell. And you can see here on the right side, yeah, that one's charging at 1000. These ones are at 300, 200. Let's see if I can change that one around a little bit. I'll pop it up to 3000 milliamp hours. See, it doesn't do anything to those ones. That one's uh, staying at 1000 here. One thing to keep in mind is that if you want to charge two batteries at three amps, you have to select one slot from one to four and another slot from five to eight. Like I mentioned, both they almost function as two separate chargers in here. It's not working at the moment because these batteries are almost fully charged. So even if I select 3000, it's going to trickle charge them, you know, at these lower, at these lower currents so that it doesn't uh, overcharge the batteries. Same thing if you want to charge four batteries at two amps, then you're going to need to basically select two slots on each section. So two slots from one to four, two slots from five to eight. So when the batteries are all installed and charging, you can press that mode button and go to the IR, which is uh, internal resistance. Okay, so this basically just checks the internal resistance of the of the battery, and you can see here basically that one is measuring at 15 micro ohms, 16 micro ohms, 116 for this Sofern cell. That's not really good. That means that there's going to be some issues in terms of uh, drawing drawing enough current from that cell. And this one's 12 micro ohms, 73 micro ohms for this other 18350 cell. That's okay, but it's getting near to that 100 mark. You know, that Phoenix cell 98, 25 for this other Phoenix cell, and 14 micro ohms for this Workhouse 21700 cell. And uh, this one's interesting because it could be potentially a rewrapped Samsung, Samsung 50E. So another thing that I've used this uh, internal resistance test as well is on other batteries that I've salvaged. So I did a video on this a while back. So I picked up a bunch of these batteries, these uh, unknown batteries from a Dyson vacuum cleaner pack. I just opened it up and extracted the cells, see if I could salvage them, use them for, for something else. And uh, one of the things I really wanted to check was the internal resistance to see if they were well and truly gone. Okay, and you can see it's calculating the internal resistance, 73 mic micro ohm, 7380. So that's still pretty all right. So if between 50 to 100, they're still going to be usable for high drain, high drain applications. Once you get to 100 plus, you're going to have issues. But uh, yeah, I put them in there, graded the cells as well, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. So another mode I want to show you is the storage mode. So you just have to press and hold that mode feature and it cycles through grade, 
and then goes to store. So this store mode here, okay, as you see, is analyzing all the batteries. So it's trying to figure out the voltage of all these batteries. And um, you can see here, 3.66 volts. It basically stores them around 3.7 volts. So if the battery is above 3.7, it discharges them. So you can see that's what it says, decharge, discharge here, 4.15. So it will discharge them to a point uh, yeah, similar to this one, 3.66. So I guess it's just rounded that up or something like that, 3.7 volts. And that apparently is the ideal charge state for batteries to store long term. Okay, if for example the battery is at 3.2 volts, uh, it's going to charge it to 3.7. Okay, but because all these batteries are at th uh, 3. Point, you know 4.2 volts, it's discharging them all. If you press and hold the mode button again goes back to current now goes to this second mode which is really cool it's the grade mode and this is the mode that i use to figure out whether these old batteries were still useful or not whether they could still hold enough charge okay because these I'm pretty sure they're rated when i when i researched them about 2200 milliamp hours uh, but if it you know came up as 500 or something there's no point i'm not going to use them but i ended up grading them and they ended up uh, coming back at I think 1,005 to 1,800, which is still pretty good. So I ended up keeping these, used them for some other smaller low draw lights around the house. Okay, but what it does here is that you can see it's charging all these batteries. So it's charging them all to the maximum capacity. Okay, once it's charged them to the maximum capacity, it's then going to discharge the cells and it's going to measure the capacity once it's done it's going to take a little while once it's done it's going to tell you like 5000 million hours or sometimes it's more it's 5200 or, or a little bit less so it's a way for you to test whether uh yeah whether those cells are legitimate or not another really cool feature that the VC8S has is that it allows you to recover over discharged batteries so sometimes you might have a battery that's like 2.7 volts and it will not charge no matter what you do. And in fact, it can be a little bit dangerous to charge it. So you can actually stick that in this charger. The VC8S will detect that it's over discharge and it will trickle charge it at a very, very low rate. Like even, I don't know, 0 0.5, 0 0.05 uh, amps or something like that to just make sure that it slowly gets the voltage up to a point where you can safely charge it at a higher rate. So that's really cool because it saves you from throwing away those those batteries. I mean, you don't want to discharge batteries to that point anyway. It's not good for them, but uh, it's good to know that you can bring them back to life. Some considerations you need to be aware of with the VC8S, it's pretty large. Okay, this is a pretty large, pretty large charger. So if you're going traveling and stuff like that, you know, I still think it's a pretty good option if you're carrying around a lot of these batteries that you need to charge. I mean, this is still going to be smaller than carrying around a lot of uh, little chargers but what i like about it is even though it's large it's just got all these additional safety features and so you know exactly what's going on when you're charging your batteries a lot of these cheap chargers out there they don't tell you anything about the battery it's just got one light you know two lights red and green and you know the battery could be charging past 4.2 volts which is pretty dangerous you know so uh, for me battery safety is the most important thing these you know if you've seen any videos of any of these batteries going wrong you don't want any of that happening to you so being able to note exactly what voltage each of these are and having that high quality reputation that you get with xtars chargers you know you can't really set a price on that the second consideration is that if you want to utilize that full two times three amp charging or four times two amp charging you're going to need a 45 watt power supply some of you might have one already at home but uh, if you don't, you can purchase one separately. There is a separate kit. The one that I have, uh, see, says here comes with the adapter. There's another version where it doesn't come with the adapter, which is a little bit cheaper as well. Okay, so make sure you you make sure you remember that if you want to access those uh, full charging capabilities. I think you know you want to make you want to access those higher charging capabilities you know having it on those lower modes is, is just infuriating sometimes you know on the old charger especially if i was charging too many cells at once i just basically leave it for the whole day do something do some work and come back to it check it at, at night 
Um, but you don't have to do that with this one. It charges a lot faster. Um, I did find as well with the included power cable that connects to the charger, it's a little bit short. I'm using a, another one here at the moment so that it can just reach the power, uh, power supply without having to pull the, uh, yeah, pull the cord too much. But if you've got a workbench or something like that and the power source nearby, that's no worries at all. Overall, I think this is pretty much the best multi-cell charger out there for anyone who needs to charge a variety of lithium nickel metal hydride cells the safety features just being able to know exactly what the battery charge level is being able to grade the batteries know the internal resistance fast charging abilities for multiple cells you know i just think you can't set a price on that it's absolutely amazing it makes my life a lot easier as a reviewer but also if you're someone who has multiple flashlights, multiple devices, and you want to keep your batteries healthy in the long term, this is definitely the way to go. So if you're interested, check out the video description. I've got a link to the VC8S there. And if you have questions, just let me know in the comments. I'm sure I've missed out a thing here or there. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, click the like button on the video and share it with a friend. It really helps me to get this video out to more people and doesn't cost you a cent. Finally, if you want to keep up to date with the latest tech reviews, make sure you subscribe.